Welcome to everyone that is tuning into this, the second ever Mad Skills live Q&A. So we have just finished a series on app bundles and we have some experts here, including the presenters of uh, that material, as well as someone from the engineering team. In the meantime, I'm Chet Haas from the developer relations team and I will be asking the questions and uh, my guests will be answering them, starting with Wojtek. Hi, I'm Wojtek. I'm also on the Android developer relations team and I worked on app bundles specifically on the local testing part and the PlayCore Kotlin extensions library. Yuri? And hi everyone, my name is Yuri. I'm from Google Play team and I'm working on app bundles and dynamic delivery. And Ben. Hi. Uh, I'm Ben. I'm also an engineer on the developer relations team. I work on the dynamic feature navigator as well as on app bundles and on demand delivery. Excellent. Um, so I will explain how this game works. Uh, we encourage you to ask questions live in the uh, the stream where you happen to be watching this and we will be trying to get to those. In the meantime, we also reached out to Twitter. We went on to Stack Overflow. We looked in the comments on uh, YouTube, uh, we basically trolled the internet um, furiously for the last few days to pick up some questions along the way. So we're gonna start out with those and then we'll dip into the live questions as they come in as well. Uh, I doubt we'll get to everything just given how time and physics works, um, but we will try to get to as much as we can and have an interesting conversation in the meantime, I hope. So let's start with this one. I will throw a softball out to the field, uh, maybe Voitech. How can you easily and quickly reduce the size of applications? What a great question to start this show. Uh, the short answer is uh, use Android app bundles to publish your app. The long answer is watch the rest of the show. We'll talk about <laughs> many, many things related to app bundles. And it's it's actually easier than you think to just switch. So yeah, stay tuned. Excellent. Yeah, check out the videos. That's what they're there for. And there are links in the videos to uh, articles to explain how to do all of this stuff as well. All right, on to number two, maybe for Yuri. Is there a way, is there any way to install Android app bundles on devices in the same convenient manner as APKs? Um, okay, so app bundle installation on devices is definitely different from APK. So it's not possible to install it directly in a way like APKs via ADB or inside device itself. Uh, that's because Android app bundle is not publishing is a publishing format and first needs to be converted to APKs to be installed on device. And there are several options how to achieve this. First option is to use special tool bundle tool that you can install on your local machine. Uh, it allows you to build APKs from your bundle and next install them on a connected device. The second option is upload your app bundle to Google Play internal app sharing and use generated link to install the application on your device via Google Play Store. Um, with internal app sharing, you don't need to have unique version code for your app and can upload debuggable bundle signed up with any key. So all restrictions are loose for internal app sharing bundles. And also with internal app sharing, you will be able to test application in a way it appears to real users. So we encourage you to do to use this way. Uh, so I, I have a follow up question then. Uh, you mentioned bundle tool. Um, that is, this is a tool that they can pick up online. It's an open source project. Is that right? Yeah, correct. It's an open source project, which is available to download on GitHub. Okay, great. And there's links, I think, also in the videos in the articles. Um, so check that out or use the Play Store. Um, speaking of Play Store, I'm going to grab a live question from the stream here from Stuart Gilbert. Oh, no, I'm going to confuse the production team by doing that. Sorry, we have a third question before I get there. Over to Ben. Is there any way to generate an APK file from Android app bundle via terminal or using Android Studio? Well, we just heard a bit about uh, bundle tool. So bundle tool is a tool that uh, both Android Studio uses as well as you can use it on the command line or you can use Gradle, which most of the Android projects use as a build tool. Um, if you just say Gradle and then, well, with Gradle, you, get, you can bundle your, um, your app and from there with bundle tool, you can um, create the APKs um, from that. So that's the easiest way to create it. Uh, the APKs that you can then install on device uh, with Android Studio, um, well, I actually, I recorded a video on this as well. So 
Um, don't go there right now, but after this show, maybe watch the video if you um, have questions on this, how it works. Well, that's basically use, use the bundle tool to create the, the bundle from both your source or um, use Gradle to have Gradle invoke bundle tool for you. And the best part is you not only recorded a video, you actually posted it. Otherwise, like you don't have to break into Ben's home just to watch the video that he recorded. That's that wasn't. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the important part. Yeah, the uh, publishing it. That's true, and also a blog post, I think. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. Now we will go to the live stream. There was a question there from Stuart Gilbert. If I use bundles, am I tied explicitly to the Play Store? I can take this one. Uh, no, you're not. First of all. The bundle format is open source through bundle tool. So if any other store distribution channel would want to implement, you know, support for bundles, they could. Uh, but even if not, um, like nothing prevents you from building APKs either directly from your project or from a bundle. So you can publish them in other distribution channels. So we're, when you, when you decide to switch to bundles for the play store, you're not taking away the possibility of still like distributing APKs to other channels. Uh, so it's up to you. Uh, okay. And so let's see back to this question came from one of the comments on one of the videos in order to install dynamic modules, uh, should the app be deployed on the play store is sort of related to the previous question. Maybe that's so just I'll, a repeat. I'll, yeah. I'll also take this one since I, I worked on the local testing part a little bit. So there's two parts of, to, to app bundles really. If you just use an app bundle uh, to, you know, uh, have Play Store to optimize your your app for delivery to devices, um, then we discussed all the ways you can use Bundle Tool or Android Studio to to deploy um, and test your, and inst install your app on devices. But there's another part, is it, and it's when you use uh, a thing called feature modules. So these could be, for example, modules that are installed on demand after your app is is installed by a user. Then it gets more complicated, and you need uh, special infrastructure to be able to, you know, deliver those modules as the app is running. And one of the ways to do it is obviously you just use Play Store, which has support for it. Um, use internal app sharing uh, to be able to install these dynamic modules as, as you run your app. The other way to do it is there is something called local testing mode in Bundle Tool, and it's actually one of my videos in the series where I describe how to use it. And there is a way to be able to install modules uh, locally at runtime, but it's mostly for testing. So um, it's it's it, it doesn't mirror the the real behavior of Play Store like a hundred percent. So be careful. Use it as a development tool, but if you want to really see how installing dynamic dynamic modules works uh, for sure, use Play Store. All right. Um, let's see. Next one, maybe over to Yuri. Uh, how can I convert my APK file into an Android app bundle? Um, there was a elaboration on that. Uh, the user had compiled their app bundle as an APK, um, but Google Play rejected the format, saying I needed to optimize it. Now I know I have to upload it as an Android app bundle. And you're muted. Or speaking very quietly. Yes, I'm, I'm, I was muted. Yeah, uh, let me take this question and split it into two parts. So, first part is just like the, an Android app bundle. You're just gonna actually. Uh, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> like like this. <laughs> so, in case you have a built APK, it's not directly possible to convert already built APK file into a bundle. Uh, but if you use Android Gradle plugin or Android Studio for development, switch into bundles should be simple for you because both of these development tools allow you to build bundles and APKs from the same source code structure. We are just invoking different Gradle commands. Um, regarding regarding uh, clarification, I don't think the problem is this APK because bundles are not mandated yet. So you are still able to upload APKs. So in case you switch to bundles, it should be the same problem. All right. Um, and let's see. Uh, I'm going to switch to a couple of live questions here. Uh, why does app bundle increase the app size after installing in the device? 
I assume that they're talking about compared to the APK that they had created prior to switching to app bundles. Um, I, I think more generally, can you talk about uh, the, the size implications of using uh, Android app bundles? Usually that's the other way around. If you use an app bundle, um, you only get delivered what your device actually needs. So from developer perspective, you have resources that are um, in APKs are in all kinds of different buckets. So you have from LDPI to maybe triple X TPI, uh, different resources on there. And only one set of those resources usually is used on a device. And with an APK or with classic APKs, you would have to install everything on device. With app bundles, we can have split APKs. That means only the bucket that is required to run on this device will be installed. So that means all the other resources won't actually be delivered. So usually your um, file size goes down with um, app, with app bundles. Not app. Well, except you're talking specifically about a monolithic APK, which includes everything. I assume that a lot of developers are also creating more device and configuration specific APKs. And I assume that this developer is talking about comparing one of those APKs versus um, the results of the Android app bundle uh, producing an APK. I would assume that maybe they've optimized it in a way where they're not including some configuration stuff that should be there that the app bundle is deciding on for them. Yeah, it seems like this shouldn't be the case. And if the, if they use the same optimizations as the app bundle does, then the size should be roughly the same. There is, however, however, one optimization that might be in, impact this. So. Um, there is a way that we store native libraries for newer versions of Android um, where we don't actually compress them in the APK. Uh, so depending how the developer checked, you know, the, the on-device size, if they mean the APK size, then actually with that optimization on, it might seem like the APK is bigger, like the, the file itself is bigger, uh, but ultimately it's better for running the app on the device and it actually takes less space total on the device. So if they, um, found that the APKs, um, sorry, that the APKs generated from the bundle used that optimization, but they didn't use them on the APKs they generated themselves. Then they might see a size difference, and it's actually, it's actually in some cases better to have these APKs slightly bigger because of these native libraries. But then we don't have to uncompress them at runtime. So um, that's the only reason I could think of where where. Seemingly, you know, um, bundles could create larger file sizes. Okay, it it seems like maybe the general answer to the question is I'm not sure that the developer is actually comparing apples to apples here. Um, that uh, this is not the result that we would expect. Uh, moving on, take another live question. Uh, why not enforce to use bundles only in Play Store and deprecate APKs? I, I guess they like app bundles, or maybe it's just supposed to spark controversy and conversation. So I'll, I'll start um, since we're, we're going to get to this topic anyway. Um, most people probably heard that we will be mandating um, a, the use of app bundles sometime next year, but for new applications only. So we don't want to, you know, make the lives of existing developers difficult to and require them, you know, to switch the format. We will continue uh, to let developers upload APKs as long as they have existing applications on the Play Store. However, in the long term, you know, we we are thinking about having a better experience for developers and app bundle and for users uh, alike. And app bundles create that better experience. So, sometime next year, we will be requiring new apps to upload using app bundles. All right, uh, and another question from the YouTube stream. Do we need to worry about different ABI, Android binary incorporated? Uh, if we have different .so files, so native um, files in the app, are app bundles going to take care of that? So yeah, so how do app bundles relate to native code and distribution? Uh, yeah, let me take this question, yeah. Uh, so actually, you can submit one bundle with libraries for as many platforms as you want to support. And Google Play will generate separate APKs for each platform and serve the best possible APK to the end device. So let's say in case device reports that it is 64-bit ARM, 
Google Play will serve APK with only 64 bits libraries to this device and one serves 32 bits libraries um, and, and vice versa. In case device reported it, it's 32 bit device, it will receive only 32 bit libraries. So only one bundle and Google Play will take care of it. Okay. Actually, that relates to another question we we're going to get to later. Maybe we'll, okay. Anyway, um, let's go back to some of the questions that we found from before. Is it possible to verify that an APK on the plat on the Play Store matches its open source code repository? Uh, and is it possible to do that yeah. with bundles as well? Okay, let me, let me try to take this question as well. Um, Currently, I'm not aware of any solution to sign only DEX files that are available right now. So, but on the other hand, I can say that bundle two modifies the DEX files for only one specific reason. Yeah, as you probably know, as you probably know, uh, Android platform below five doesn't support multiple DEX files natively for your application. So in case your app needs to support such devices and doesn't fit into one DEX file also and requires legacy multi-DEX support, bundle tool in this case remerge DEX files to apply main DEX list and actually making your application compatible with legacy multi-DEX. Uh, other than that, uh, bundle tool doesn't touch your DEX files at all and you can check it via checking source source code of bundle tool. Also, you can install your APKs on a device, take it from it and check in Android Studio that your DEX files are not changed at all. All right, uh, let's see, next one, okay. Will, yep. Yeah, I could just yeah, add on to that previous one. Uh, when speaking of Android Studio, many people, people are aware of a tool called the APK Analyzer. Uh, and you know, in the name, it has APK, but it actually also supports bundles. So if you drag and drop an Android app bundle into the main Android Studio window, the APK analyzer should open with the like the contents of your bundle, and then you can go into things like resources and Dex code and inspect inspect what's inside, including the bytecode if you if you want. So you could theoretically you know see if everything that's supposed to be there is in there. So I just wanted to mention because not many people probably uh, know that the APK analyzer also supported bundles. All right. Uh, will you extend, you personally, will you extend app bundles to allow for developer signed artifacts and no app signing? Uh, maybe Wojtek on this? Uh, yeah, so I talked brief briefly about the requirement next year for new apps to use app bundles. And one thing that comes with that is that by extension, we will require uh, play app signing. So um, developers will need to either generate the app signing key on play or upload their own key to play because that's a prerequisite for app bundles. And um, we've heard from developers that uh, some of them just don't want to do it. They don't want to have keys managed by play. And currently that's not possible if, if you want to use app bundles. Um, but we've heard that feedback and uh, I, ca I can't talk about anything uh, right now, we don't have anything to announce, but we are looking into options, how we could alleviate some of these concerns. It doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, you know, allowing um, to keep your own key while uploading uh, bundles. It, 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 we're looking into different options, but we just don't have a solution to, to announce right now. Uh, but we still have, you know, around a year till the requirement. So I'm, I'm really hopeful that we'll have an answer for developers with this. A year in software time. Back in the old days, we shipped like four releases in a year. So surely we can solve problems like this in a year. Yeah, I mean, we're giving developers some some time until we mandate you know, app bundles to make yep. it easier for the switch. All right, so let me ask something could be a little controversial, um, but I, I think it's important to talk about it. I think there are some fears about um, when you get involved in an app signing, like what are you trusting on the other side? Like where there are, you know, giving you their car keys um, uh, or keys of some sort and then trusting that the right thing is going to happen. So the question in the live stream was, can you address the statements, uh, including the one by this uh, questioner, I believe, that app bundles can be decompiled by the Play Store to add malicious code? So I guess what are what are the steps um, that we take or the, the verification that the developers have that the Play Store is not doing the wrong thing on their behalf or to their app? 
I think it, I think this question really relates to something that I asked pre, uh, I answered previously, and okay. I already described that DEX files are not touched and and a ways how how developer can ensure it right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, we're doing the right thing, and you can you can test that and verify it for yourself. Um, sort of related. Uh, so um, quick question on the live stream: preventing app piracy via app bundles? Question mark. Um, so uh, I guess there's a question about: uh, Is the can app bundles be used to avoid app piracy problems? So what we've seen is that if an app gets uh, pirated or copied from one device to another, that um, that happens. And uh, well, with app bundles, that is trickier. So we have seen. Um, Folks come up with uh, developers come up to us say, "Hey, I have these issues on uh, on that I see on the on the play console, which say there's resources missing and I see more crashes because of this." Um, these are likely because people are trying to take their app from your app from one device and move it to another, and they don't do it the way that uh, they don't add all the things that are required to run the app. That is because the format now installs multiple APKs, so. Um, Long story short is yes, by um, by design, kind of um, makes it easier for people to, or makes it harder for people to pirate apps. However, let's just be clear that it's it's not like it's not a feature of it's just indirectly a side effect of how yeah. bundles generate multiple APKs, right? Specific to a device. So this is not something that we built as a security measure. No, it's just because the way if you take um, one APK, which is the base APK, which is what is required to run on every device, in many cases, resources aren't placed in that same APK. And that is because that's why um, this happens to, to devices when somebody just takes the base APK and moves that to another different device. All right, uh, question do I saw on Twitter. Should I submit separate bundles for 32 and 64 bit using multiple APK feature to make the game available for every Android phone? I, I think you addressed at least part of this before, Yuri. Yeah, yeah. So, so you don't need to publish multiple bundles. You can stay with one and include in this bundle as many so files for as many platforms as you want. And Google Play will take care of it and deliver only those native libraries which are required for this concrete device. Okay, uh, great. And maybe for Ben, since uploading an app bundle to the Play Store, I sometimes see resource problems. Can you explain why that is? Uh, maybe because people try and copy paste your app to a different device and only take the base APK. Um, that's what the main reason we see uh, apps crash with the resource issues, or um, maybe you have installed it on a device without having the the proper um, splits, the proper resource splits installed on the device as well. All right. Uh, and, and, by, yeah. and by the way, um, developers are usually afraid that you know these problems will affect their app somehow. Um, but we're actually working on solutions for for people who maybe inadvertently installed the wrong APK for the, their device and like the, the newer versions of Play Store and Android will be uh, helpful for those people to be able to actually update their app to a working state. So. Right. Question from the stream is breaking down app code in libraries and module help in app bundle size. And if yes, please shed a little light on that. Uh, yes, the, that's a short answer is uh, definitely yes. This is why we have feature modules. Um, if you have feature modules, um, you can install these not just at, in, at initial install time, but later on by requesting them either using the Play Core API or uh, with conditional delivery as well as because basically instead of shipping only one APK at the same time or at one part of the application in the beginning at install time, you can ship things later on to the users that need it. So say if you have um, an app that has a free feature as well as a premium feature, you could load the premium feature once the user has opted into using the premium feature. Vice versa, you can also uninstall parts of your application if you no longer need them. So if you have a 
um, a, like a video or something as instructions for your application that you have to install in the beginning, you can uninstall it after your user has gone through that tutorial. So over time, your app size can be as small as needs be and not as small as or not as large as it has to be in order to function for everybody. I'm thinking that um, the sort of the automatic, the the free version of app bundles, um, if if you would, uh, is that it, it does the right thing with resources automatically. You don't need to do anything for that. If you want to do something more interesting and and start splitting up your app and and having to do something intelligent with the actual code that you're shipping with your app, then there's efforts um, involved in that, and then you can make the trade off of whether you want these dynamic feature modules, right? Absolutely right. So to create a bundle to get a splitting of resources, so um, everything that's under REST as well as languages um, and uh, the CPU architectures, you get that for free by instead of uploading an APK, uploading an Android app bundle. But if you want to go ahead and um, read benefits on compile time on the one hand, also you can speed up your engineering velocity because you have um, just separate parts of your app that people can work on um, separately rather than having everybody in the same code base. You have clear boundaries that are enforced by the compiler. Um, that makes it easier for you to develop just in that specific part. And as well as you have um, the possibility to then download only these parts of your app. But that comes at the cost of you actually have to work in this, um, put, put actually engineering work in this and not just compile work. All right. Um, thank you. Let's see another live stream, uh, maybe for Voitech. Is it possible to keep resources from all locales if we manage locale inside the app? So the automatic stuff I was talking about before was it detects the locales on the user devices um, and only ships those that are actually required for those runtime devices. But what if the app is trying to do something more intelligent about locales? Yep, so there are two ways to go about this uh, for apps that have this internal, you know, in-app language switcher. Um, the easiest one, the fastest to implement is to actually configure your app bundle in, in, in your Gradle build file to not split using languages. So there are three switches in three options in, in the Gradle configuration. One for languages, one for uh, native libraries, and one for um, density-based resources. Uh, and you can just disable splitting by language. So uh, every installed app will have all languages and your app just continues working. Now, the more interesting approach, if your language resources are really large, is um, there is an API in the PlayCore library um, that is used for dynamically downloading language resources at runtime. So um, if you want to go down that route, you actually have to write some code, but instead you will, again, get the benefits of a bundle. So only one language will be installed on the user's device, the one that's configured in the, in the system configuration. But if the user wants to switch the language at runtime inside the application, you can program it, programmatically request a download from the Play Store, it'll deliver the new language, and your app can then switch to the new uh, locale. All right. Uh, great. Let me see. Next question. Not sure who wants this one. Anyway, if we can keep our existing key without giving to you and yet still take it, take benefit of the app bundle. Uh, so sort of app signing app bundle, maybe, uh, maybe a Voitech question. Not sure who wants this. Yeah. So I, I briefly talked about this before. Uh, we are looking into options, not right now, and I don't have anything to announce, but okay. we've, and we, we're hearing this feedback, and we are looking into it, but um, I don't know what the you know the end result will be. Uh, okay. We'll have... Just uh, before yeah, we go into the just before I go to the next one, I wanted to go uh, one step uh, back. We talked about the Play Core library twice, and about a little bit of code that you have to write. Um, we do have samples out there for you to take a look at. Um, so we do have on GitHub. If you go to the Android organization, take a look at the app bundle samples. There's a lot of usage on the API, uh, on all the things that we mentioned today. Uh, we talk a lot about how you can use the API to install uh, features on demand, how you can do conditional delivery, how you can do language delivery, how you can configure your splits. All these things are on there to for you to take a look at, to, for you to play around. And the Play Core API, because we mentioned that a couple of times, and we might mention that as well, that is how you as a developer can tell the Play Store what should be delivered later on during the lifetime of an application, not just at install time where you, where the user requests your application, but you as a developer can request when a feature should be installed. 
uninstalled when a language split should be installed and uninstalled, as well as you can do uh, multiple other things with the uh, with the uh, APKs that you want to request. Yep, and just one small remark. Uh, all of that is not needed if you just want to publish using an app bundle. If you just want to switch to an app bundle, you don't have to write any code or use the Play Core API. If you want any of these advanced delivery features uh, that come with app bundles, um, then you will have to use PlayCore. Uh, but the base optimizations, the, the, the base usage of app bundles does not require you uh, to use all this. All right. Um, and then a question. I think we've talked a lot about this, but I wanted to maybe have a conversation about size. Enforcing bundle is necessary? Question mark. Uh, because my APK size is five megs, will bundle really reduce the size further? I, my understanding of the the stats that I saw, the latest stats were what, an average size savings of twenty percent. Um, I don't know if it depends on like how big the app is in general or whether we have any more specifics that are worth talking about. Um, you don't need app bundles to save size on your uh, on your application, but it makes it a lot easier. So there's ways that we have advocated for a long time, for example, uh, use vector drawables instead of re rendered images that will drive down your APK size, no matter how you install it on a device. But using app bundles is the easiest way to save file size on device for each user. Right. I can add only that uh, maybe in the worst case, it should be the same big as an APK. So. Okay. Um, yeah, which which we had talked about before, where someone was getting different results, but maybe because they weren't comparing the same thing. Not clear. All right. Uh, another from the stream. If we have an existing app, can I migrate to using the Play Store signing? I'm pretty sure your article and video goes over stuff like that. Uh, the, there's an FAQ on on Medium that Boytech wrote um, yep. about app signing. There's a video all about play app signing. This is the first video in this series uh, of math skills. And there's also a, a comprehensive article on Medium that explains everything about play app signing. And the answer is yes, existing apps can um, enable play app signing later on. So you, as far as I know, you cannot disable a play app signing once you've opted in. But yes, existing apps can enable it later on. OK. Uh, I'm going to go back to another question we found on Twitter. The app bundle will be the best solution for the light versions, and the right path to do it will be creating modules. Uh, maybe for start with Voitech again. Right. So it, I guess it all depends what you understand by light version. Uh, I don't. I don't think that's like codified anywhere. Uh, but light versions are usually when you know certain developers see that their apps have grown a lot in size, and they're looking to make it easier to use these apps for uh, users with maybe smaller, uh, slower phones or with phones with less storage. And so they create a separate light version that is maybe um, has less features or is, is smaller in size. So it all depends what you want to do. The app bundle will certainly make your app smaller um, in size. That doesn't mean that an app bundle will make your app use less RAM, for example, or you know, maybe you need to actually cut some features. Um, on the other hand, you could use uh, the deliver delivery modes like on demand or conditional that Ben mentioned to make sure that you know only users with stronger phones get these more advanced features. So the answer here is yes and no. Depends what you need. An app bundle can be a helpful tool, but it will not take care of, of everything. Of, performance, like runtime performance of your UI, of memory use, that's that's all up to you. All right. I would yeah, like to add on to the conditional delivery. One of the really good things about conditional delivery here is that you can uh, have a feature only delivered on condition that the device actually supports that feature. So anything that you can declare on your device as uh, using the user's feature attribute, you can use that as a conditional condition for conditional delivery. So for example, if I have something that requires a camera, um, I can only deliver that module to devices that actually have a physical camera by setting the condition for the feature module. All right, uh, another question from the Twitter threads. Is it possible to migrate to Android app bundles while keeping the mobile app and the TV app separate, and there was more to this. Also, if I publish an old min SDK version app, 
with multiple APK, can I update the APK? Maybe this is Ben. Sure. Um, so for uh, different devices, uh, like uh, for for TV, you want to publish a separate app bundle for, but you can just publish those. And for older devices, if you have an APK that is still available for devices with uh, lower API versions, lower um, maximum memory APIs, then you can still do that the same way the Play Store supported that before. There, so there's no differentiation between whether you have uploaded an app bundle or an APK. Okay. Uh, and then back to the live stream. Would be great if the team can share some insights on how update works for the dynamic feature modules. Let's say a new version of the app is published with only a change in the base or the dynamic feature. Yeah, maybe I can take this. So uh, Google Play actually generates patches from version to version once you update a version, we generate patch per each split. And in case you don't change anything in your dynamic feature module, so patch will be just zero. So we won't deliver it. So only patch for base module will be delivered and applied. But okay. you still have to upload a an app bundle for everything. So that's yeah, only yeah. For, the, for the user that downloads it, they will see the benefits. As a developer, you still have to upload your full uh, app bundle as you would have to before with APKs. Okay. At least you're only uploading the monolithic thing and you're not forcing it, the monolithic thing to be downloaded to everybody else. Uh, all right, another from the live stream. If I upload a new version in Play Console and add a bundle from an old version, will the update size reduce? Or if not, how can we reduce the update size, for example, to include only changes that were made in the code? I'm not sure I understand the first part of this, but Yuri basically described what happens. So okay. the Play Store always diffs whatever is on the user's device, whether the one yeah. that's installed on the user's device with the new code coming in and tries to deliver the smallest patch possible. OK, um, we'll keep moving on. Uh, let's see. APKs are now created on the store. Runtime protectors, I'm not familiar with these, will now see them as being tampered with. Are there any plans to support this going forward? I'm not sure what this is about. Um, Did, is anybody familiar with tampering detection software? Nope. OK, um, moving on. Uh, let's see. But before we move on, if you feel yeah. that is a problem that is specifically because app bundles, um, please use the issue tracker and file a bug against it, uh, because that should not be the case. And for people who don't know how to find our issue tracker, I believe the URL is b.android.com, and then you will find instructions. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, is there a possibility maybe in the future? So this is a future development. Um, spoiler alert, we're not going to answer. Um, but uh, let's see, to be able to generate the APKs by a tool, uh, maybe something like bundle tool and upload those APKs. Chat froze for me, so okay. I'm take that one. Yeah. Uh, so again, this is a this is a question that I think I've already answered. Uh, okay. uh, pro probably not as as it's described in the question, um, as this would make the publishing process even more difficult for developers, and we actually want to make it simpler and safer. Uh, however, again, we've heard this feedback, and we will be looking into options how to make this uh, possible. However, probably not in the shape that was described here. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to keep ribbing through these pretty quickly. We're probably coming down to the last five minutes here. Uh, I'm sure we won't get to all of them. Does adding multiple variants of one asset, HDPI, MDPI, XX, HDPI, uh, reduce my app size with app bundle enabled compared to normal APK? And it does give me an idea that if you really want to take advantage of app bundles capabilities, just add in as many configuration sensitive resources as possible, and then the savings you get are going to be extreme. Right? Yes and no. So um, the first part to, to answer the question that was just asked, um, definitely it will be, you can add uh, resources in your different resource buckets and that will be taken care of. But if you go into too fine grain, uh, so say uh, you have 
um, not just the, the the regular resource bucket, but smaller Swift modifiers, um, those might be packaged into the base APK at the moment because um, it gets very conflicting. We, we might have conflicting uh, resources with that. So um, stick to the base things. So from LDPI to uh, whatever XHPIs you have there. Okay. Uh, does app bundles also need ProGuard rules to secure specific classes as in APKs? Yeah, Yuri? Yeah. Uh, so definitely yes, because DEX files are compiled on your machine via Android Gradle plugin. So bundle tool doesn't touch any DEX files, as I already said. So in case you you enable minification of your DEX files and your code is not reachable, uh, and but you still want to have it in your APK file, uh, because you are calling it via reflection, you still need to have a ProGuard rules. I don't think it would be a changeover what they're doing for APKs though, right? Right. Okay. Uh, someone says, I just tuned in. I uh, don't know if it was asked already. I don't believe so. What happens to language splits when the user changes the language system wide, right? So we're determining what language specific information to send down based on the locales that a user has. Well, what happens when they change that? Is that detected by Play Store and then the new stuff comes down? Yeah, Yuri? Uh, yeah, actually that's what happens. So uh, Google Play Store detects that uh, language is changed and all additional splits for all languages for applications that were generated from bundles are downloaded and uh, injected. So it, it happens like in uh, a few minutes after language change. Uh, great. Um, let's see. Someone says, just to test, can I extract APK from the bundle and install it on the physical phone? Uh, or is there another way to install the bundle on the device before going to the Play Store? So I think Wojtek already talked about different testing options locally as well as uh, uploading in the Play Store. I don't know if there's anything to add there. Yeah, just use bundle tool. Others have mentioned it as well. Uh, yep. Bundle tool is the tool for generating a set of APKs from a bundle and installing it locally. Uh, okay, actually, I have all modules delivered at install time and I package them with package release universal APK. I'm not familiar with that. Um, is that something we offer or is that a somebody else's thing? I will be able to do the same in the future and get a unique Android app bundle, question mark? Let me try to tag this one. Uh, so, in case all modules delivered in install time, currently bundle tool, a new version of bundle tool actually fuses all these modules into base. So they are not delivered as separate modules. Uh, everything that is install time is in base APK. So actually it's it's already done by design in case you use a newer version bundle tool then uh, 1.0, it, it should be the case for you. Uh, all right, and what to do with devices which pick wrong DPI resources? No, I mean, if that's the resolution that the device is advertising, I assume those are the resources we send down. I'm not sure that App Bundle is doing anything more intelligent here. It does exactly what the Android system does. It just scales down from the next higher bucket as it has been doing before. Uh, yep. Okay. Um, yes. So consistent with how APKs and Android works in general. Uh, this is theoretically the last live question. There are a couple that I skipped uh, because either we don't have opinions on that stuff or um, uh, we had already talked about it. How are the patches for the splits on updates generated? Can those patches also be generated offline locally? I mean, bundle tool, bundle tool, bundle tool. Um, anything else to add here? Mm, the short answer is no. Yeah, bundle tool doesn't have that. Um, oh, okay. All right. We did open source a, a patch generator that was used by by Play Store at, at some point. However, this technology keeps evolving. So, um, even if you find it on GitHub, it's not necessarily the same one uh, as the newest and greatest greatest that Play Store uses. Um, there was a blog post a few years ago that described a few techniques. Uh, you can search for it by searching for file by file updates, I believe. Um, but again, this keeps evolving. It, you know, it's internal to Play Store. So, um, okay. Uh, for the last question, I'm going to go back to the Twitter threads, um, and then we're going to wrap this up. How do I maintain the ability to cross installs between Google Play and alternative 
app stores with app bundle. Um, I mean, Voitech, I remember you talking about this in and and Yuri as well. So we have bundles all like you can produce these things on your own. And if other people want to pick up uh, bundle support, that's fine. But is there a more general answer? Yeah, it, it depends what the person is asking. If they're asking uh, how to generate artifacts that they want to upload to other distribution channels, then I think we already answered it. You can either just build an APK from your project, or you can build APKs from your um, uh, bundle, or even you can download a universal APK from the Play Store and publish it somewhere else. However, if the person is asking about um, users installing an app from another store and then trying to update it, for example, through Play Store, then they also have to remember about one thing, and that is that the app signature must match. So if they use Play App Signing, they would have to upload a key to Play App Signing um, and use that same key to release on other channels um, so that um, people would have, you know, um, wherever they install the app from, it would be signed with the same key. Uh, otherwise, they will not be able to update using a different channel. But that's, that's it for me. All right. Um, great. We are all out of time. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about and, and the question never came up? Or do you want to share anything about uh, future directions and developments? Yeah, actually, there's one thing I wanted to mention, uh, which is that we just published a blog post on our official Android developers blog, um, where uh, we finally give developers a date for the app bundle requirement. And that's August 2021. So before we just said sometimes next uh, sometime next year we're going to require uh, the use of app bundles from new apps. Uh, now you can read about it. It's in the blog post. It's August 2021. An actual commitment. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong. They published this during this Q and A just because of this Q and A, right? So we had of positive course. impact yeah. on making the team commit. Sure. It's not a coincidence at all. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, then I think that's it for us. Thanks for all the questions. Uh, I hope we got to uh, most of the topics everybody wanted to talk about um, and ask about, and I'm sure we've answered all of their questions and they will um, go forth and uh, and do the right things. And it is, um, it's coming up to winter time, so I wanted to remind people to uh, bundle up. Thanks everyone.